Greetings and uh, welcome everyone. We are coming to you from Exodus TV, where we are broadcasting live from the Exodus studios here at Eagle Life Assembly in Zimbabwe, Blawayo. Um, I want to welcome you all for yet another um, opportunity that we have been allowed by the Lord to come and hear and witness the intriguing and captivating testimonies um, that are going to be shared here, some life-changing experiences that have, been, have happened in the uh, lives of people here. Um, through the power of Jesus, the anointing of God, and the prayers and prophecies that have been offered through the men of God uh, here in Blawai at Eagle Life Assembly, Bishop and Prophet, uh, prophet Dr. Blessing Samuel Chiza. So today we have got a very fascinating and captivating program, it's like more of a talk show, where we are going to be exploring and we'll try to demystify the mysteries that surround one of the most controversial and less understood areas, which is football, God in football, or Jesus in sport. Um, the men of God are the prophecies in the world of football. How do they relate? How are they involved? Are they required in there? Are they necessary? Do we need the men of God? Do we need God in football? So brace yourself because it's going to be very intriguing and uh, try to be very attentive as we have got a very rich panel here that I have. Um, as I'm going to be introducing them, we have got very experienced men that have, been, um, that have seen it all. Some are still participating in the world of football. Um, so I will introduce my guest here. We have got... Uh, First to my right, I've got Coach Kelvin Kaindu. Uh, let's put our hands together for Coach Kelvin Kaindu. So I've got uh, Mr. Kumbi Raichimombe as well, Deacon Kumbi on his extreme right there. And I've got also Captain Innocent Mapuranga and our referee, Mr. Chivandire here. So I'll begin with uh, Coach Kelvin Kaindu. Coach Kaindu is an accomplished coach. Um, a soccer coach who attained a UEFA B license coach um, a badge in the UK. He's got a CAF A license as well. He's a lecturer and he's also a pastor. He's a man of God. He has coached very big teams both in Zimbabwe and Zambia. Amongst them, he has coached uh, one of the biggest teams in Zimbabwe, which is the highly supported team in Blawa, called Highlanders. He has coached Triangle. He has coached Haumain FC, Power Dynamos Nkana, and Zinako in uh, Zambia back there. He is a married man, a man of God, and he's got an advanced diploma in Bible study as well. So currently he is also going to be the one to take over the coaching reins at Highlanders Football Club this season. Thank you, Coach Kaindu. We welcome you to this panel. Thank you. All right, so I will begin with uh, you, Coach Kaindu. We want to touch a number of prophecies uh, and confirmations that have happened um, from a period stretching from 2012 coming to around 2014, 2015. Of specific and of most interest is the prophecy that was given about the team that you were coaching back then in 2013, Highlanders, when they played against Haumain in the finals of the Mbada Diamond League Cup, where a specific prophecy was given about how your team is going to be performing. Okay, before that, there is a background to that team. The team that you were coaching had just lost 4-0 to Harare City on a, in, a, in, a premier, in a Premier League match. Then you are coming from a defeat, and you are being now told by a man of God that your team is going to win the Mbada Diamond League. And he didn't just prophesy a win, but he gave the specific details as to your team is going to win 3-0, and even the details of how your team is going to score, how your goalkeeper was going to save the penalty as part of the match, I want you to just take me through how that um, happened and what you felt, especially coming from the background where you have just given, where your team had just lost and you are now being told that your team is going to win 3-0 in that particular match. Right, thank you very much. Uh, I think I came to uh, meet the prophet in the year 2013 uh, through Pastor Eddie, who was a pastor in his, this church. 
he told me that the prophet had a message uh, for me and that is how I managed to come and meet the prophet and he gave that prophetic word and one thing that showed a lot of confidence uh, you know when it comes to issues about football and prophecy it comes with a lot of uh, controversy uh, we have seen even the recent AFCON where a, a, a number of prophets were given but when the prophet spoke to me and the way that he was speaking, you could tell and see that God was involved in what was about to happen. Thank you. Thank you, Coach. So on that particular day, on that particular encounter, a, a, a prophecy was very specific. And it was showing, it was given by the men of God that your team is going to win 3-0 against um, um, how mine. And even when I'm to recall the prophecy, it was very specific. He said, Highlanders is not going to finish the season trophyless, but is going to win some silverware. And yet there was nothing that was showing in terms of the performance, considering that you had just come from a defeat. And now, all of a sudden, the details that came through were very accurate according to the prophets. And then the, 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 the prophets came to, to, uh, to fruition. Not only telling you about the predict prediction of the match, but also the details. What would you actually, or how did you feel on that particular time or that particular encounter or that season leading to the match when the game was eventually played at Powerfield Stadium? Uh, uh, first of all, when a word of prophecy has been given, uh, I think it does not easily manifest. It also needs the people that have received the prophetic word to have faith and also the way that they receive the word. Uh, even in during the preparations, I think there were so many days that were in encounter with the prophet in terms of prayer and the preparation for the game that was going to be played. It's not just a prophecy that was given, even serious prayers were conducted before the game was played. Thank you, Coach. Now, coming to Captain Mapranga, I've got Captain Innocent Mapranga. I'm referring to him as the captain because he's a former captain of Islanders Football Club. He played for the club uh, from 2009 to 2015. That's professional soccer. He is also a coach who coached Blawayo City Juniors in 2016. And he also coached a Division, T Division 1 team, Ratanang FC, in 2022. You hold a license in coaching, professional license in coaching as well. Coming back to the same issue of the Mbada Diamond League final that was played, you were the, co the captain for the team. And there are articles, I'm sure media you will help me to just flight some of the articles, that show you celebrating the victory, also showing Coach Kayindu being hoisted in the air, people celebrating with him because of the victory that had just happened. But of particular interest, the entire team, including yourself, captain by that time, you were wearing T-shirts that were written, Prophet Chiza predicted big win for Boso. I, I wanted to find out how did it happen that the entire team was or could play the finals with such information or T-shirts that are written, such kind of information. What had inspired that? Thank you so much. First of all, I want to thank God for the grace and anointing that is upon Dr. Prophet Chiza. Uh, the first time we, we met, it was a training. And after that, we met at a, where we used to camp. He was introduced by our coach. You, you, you know, most of us as players, we don't believe in, in the things of God. But from that moment we saw him, he prayed for us and he preached to us. And uh, to my surprise, everyone who was in the camp, he decided to, to cooperate and uh, people were transformed. Even those people who were naughty, they were carrying even Bibles at camp. Then when we were playing against uh, our mind by the Diamond Cup. Uh, a previous game we have been beaten 4-0, but our morale was down, we, but we are not believing that we are going to win that game. 
but because of the word of a prophet, we went up and to win 3 0. Because before the whole week, I, I remember the prophet was going to Stadium Baba Fields and he was praying there through the dressing rooms, every corner of that stadium, he prayed. And uh, I still remember he, he kicked almost three penouts, scoring it uh, so well to the way the supporters of Highlanders almost sit and celebrate their team. Uh, and he came to us, he told us, we are going to win 3-0. At first, we did not believe. But to our surprise, on Sunday, we were the victors. We won 3-0, and we celebrated as a team. Wonderful. So uh, there are lots of uh, articles that I watch with um, the celebrations. And what just intrigued me was the kind of unity and also the um, belief that the entire team had generated or had been generated within that particular team. Because the entire team was wearing, not just celebrating the victory, but they played the entire game with t-shirts that were printed about the prophets. Before the game even started, they were wearing the t-shirts that were printed that Highlanders would win 3-0. And they played with the T-shirts on. And after the game, they removed their top jerseys and they exposed these T-shirts, which uh, showed that they had the, so much belief in the prophets, um, in the prophets that had been given by the uh, men of God. Now I've got Mr. Kumbi, Mr. Kumbi, right? Deacon Kumbi, right? Chimombe, yeah? He's a, a, a former soccer player as well. He played for uh, Pub Castle. He played for Chicken Inn, for Quellaton. Currently, he is coaching, he's coaching Juve Spurs, which is a marvelous Nakampas team. And he's also involved with the Real Stars Academy and also with the Inge of Iyanyatela, which is a Blawayo Army team in Division 1. Mr. Chimombe, there is a lot of hideous acts, a lot of juju practices, and a lot of consultation of traditional healers by football players. And the Becky, uh, the Becky, the background staff that also manages these, uh, these teams, non-playing staff as well. As a former football player, as a, as a current um, coach who's also involved with these uh, football players as well, tell us probably your stories or your encounters about these and how the encounter with the men of God, who is prof uh, Prophet uh, Blessing Chiza, um, how it impacted or what is the encounter or your stories concerning the issues of juju in football? Uh, thank you. Uh, it all started uh, when I was going for a practice match, uh, when I was still part of Chicken Inn. So uh, I met Prophet by then. I didn't know that he was a man of God, but he, he was at a distance. And then apparently an uh, overseer always pointed at me. And then I said, why is it uh, they are pointing at me? I will show them who I am, why are they pointing at me? And then apparently when I got there, and then the bishop, he greeted me by my name. And then I said, ah, now these false my pro story prophets, yeah, they have started. <laughs> and then the next thing, and then he said, how are you brother Kumbi? And then he, I kept quiet. We are going for a soccer match. Why is it like I'm seeing juju in your pocket? And then the next thing, you know, when you are carrying your things, you always react. And then I touched the place where that thing was. And then now, and then the prophet said, uh, my brother, uh, what I can tell you is uh, you can play without these things. Uh, using juju, it's not of God. And then apparently, the man of God prayed for me. And then when I went for the match, you know, I was now deliberating to use my thing on the pocket or to rely on the prayer that was just said. And then the next thing I just said, all right, let me just have uh, that belief of not using my, my chuchu. And then I left it in the bag. And then I performed well without that without the juju and even up to today i don't know what was happening and him he said i even he had not even told me that 
he was he had, he, we had a church that was called Eagle Life. He just said that you are going to fly like an eagle. And then I just said, ah, okay, okay. And the when he was saying that, now when I said that I would want to show him where I am, my hands were at the back and then I was just nodding, yes, 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 yes. That's how I got to know the man of God and then that's how I also got to know Jesus. That's when I also had to take the guts of stopping using church. Powerful. Still on you, uh, Mr. Shimombe. I've got um, I've got a jersey here that was presented to our father, to the bishop, uh, by one a very popular player, uh, Marvelous Nakamba. This is a jersey that he came and presented as a testimony. I just wanted you to help elaborate on how this transpired and what has happened or what is happening to him concerning uh, prophets that was given to him. Okay. Uh, that jersey, it, belongs to, it belonged to Marvelous Nakamba. Uh, by that time, he was struggling in soccer. And then that's when he came to meet our father. And then uh, our father prayed for him. And then he also gave him a prophecy pertaining uh, the club that he was, and also even uh, released a prophecy that I'm seeing you, um, you are going to have, I think it was about two teams that would want to sign him. And then, uh, and then he even told him specifically what, um, you should go for this team. And then that team where you are going, that's the team that will take you to, to, to England. And then that's when, after that, uh, you know, I will also say it as a player, as a former player. You know, especially when the man of God will be telling you uh, this will happen. And then us, with that belief from back, our background of going to traditional healers, You'll be now doubting, is it going to happen or what, or what? And then apparently, that's when now Mave had a breakthrough. And then the next thing, we saw him at Aston Villa. The next thing now is at Luton. Thank you. Uh, so this is not necessarily hearsay. And um, I'm sure even when Mr. Marvelous Nakamba is watching, he can testify to this specific prophecy that was given to him. And I'm sure at one point in time, you also find time to also just come and you hear from him specifically speaking about um, this prophet. Thank you. Mr. Chivandire is an accomplished referee, a former Premier League referee in Zimbabwe here, who started uh, practicing in 1999 and has officiated in all stadia in Zimbabwe. And he was also crowned uh, the referee of the year in 2021, 2022 here in Zimbabwe. Now, Mr. Chivandire, the issue, I want to just continue on the trajectory of the juju, trajectory of the, you know, charms, consulting traditional healers. You have interacted with a lot of players from different teams. I can say almost every team in Zimbabwe. There is this notion or the narrative that if you don't get your stuff worked out, if you don't powers, you, your team is never going to win and you will not play good football as a footballer. Well, what is your take on that? You have had encounters with such kind of activities. Uh, th thank you very much. Yes, as you have said, I have uh, officiated in almost all the stadiums in Zimbabwe. So I have met players, uh, team officials, who include the coaches and managers, and also other referees, as we were officiating these uh, Premier League games. Yes, here I am. I'm not representing the referee fraternity, but I'm representing myself and the experiences which I have gone through. Yes, you meet the players, you meet the teams. That belief is there, that if they go to the traditional healers, they will get the powers. That's their belief. Because one way or the other, you meet this team. Uh, when the teams are getting into the field of play, 
One team would want to go around the whole pitch, around the other team. Then you will see players from the opposite team, they will avoid that team to encircle them. That's the belief which we, I was seeing. And also, at times you, the team officials will come and tell you that, uh, Mr. Ref, on our benches, we are seeing salt, uh, the one, the coarse salt, or they see coarse salt in their dressing room. So, as uh, the Premier League, there are rules and regulations where we have to make sure that the home team, it has to clean that mess. But uh, you can see from the look of the players and the officials that they really believe in that. But uh, from my belief and what I have seen, knowing the man of God, the doctor, Prophet Chiza, I have known him since 20, 2012, uh, here at Eagle Life. We have seen a lot. Even I myself, when I was, I will be going out for refereeing, I will pass through the church, get my anointing oil, anoint myself even before I get into the game. That's my belief. And I also have the same belief and uh, see that even the players, the teams, they can still come here, get the same anointing, which took me to where I was crowned the referee of the year at the age of 47, which has never happened here in Zimbabwe. So what can stop a player, what can stop a team to come and get the same anointing? It is, it is there. Here I am to testify and to show you that the, the belief is there, but we have seen teams believing that being beaten even in the soccer field. So from my belief, that won't work. Come here, it will work this side. Thank you. Coach Kato. The issue of both, I want, I, want, I want the information to be very clear, especially to the aspiring young soccer players and those that have just joined also, that are trying to make their names um, using the, the world of football. The, the, the issue of uh, this juju, what would you advise, I mean, like concerning the issue of consulting traditional healers, whereas opposed to getting advice and getting spiritual advice and prayers from a man of God and from Jesus himself? Uh, first of all, it is, it is not easy when you are working in these industries. Uh, but what is important now is that God is lifting people in every place wherever people are working. It, it doesn't matter if even in the prisons we have seen God lifting people so that they minister and spread the gospel. What we do, we do is we, we don't force the word of God. I think we speak to those that are willing, that are opening up, and we encourage them and show them the way and it's, you, 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 you are somebody who is inspiring them and they should be able to see the results that are working also in your life as you stand and begin to testify that when I gave my life to Christ, this is what God has been doing into my life. Thank you. Now, the background of the matter here is that the Islanders team had gotten a prophecy believed part of the team, the members that were in the team, former players, they really believed a lot, and they had so much faith. A word of prophecy was released. They took the word of prophecy, they ran with it, and it came to fruition. Now, this is 2013 in December, and the Islanders won the Mbada Diamond League Cup. Going to 2024, January, there was an Africa uh, tournament, an African tournament, um, a soccer, soccer tournament, the African Nations Championship, the Orange African Nations Championship, which is um, generally referred to as the CHAN. Part of the team players who constituted the Zimbabwe national team, most of them actually came from also the Highlanders Football Club, if you still remember. The likes of uh, Peter Rio Moyo, um, Milton Ngobe, um, um, the goalkeepers there. And they constituted most of them. Um, the, the cost of the larger part of the team. So when they were also going for the Africa Championship, Africa Nations Championship in South Africa, Bloemfontein, they 
also had to go with that belief and with the same word that had been prophesied to them. Now they continued in being in connection with the prophet who was speaking into their life by that time and prophecies were released. I want to make it very clear so that people understand where I'm coming from. Prophecies were given concerning matches that were played by Zimbabwe. There was a match that was played in the quarterfinals against the Mali where Prophet Chiza predicted or prophesied that Zimbabwe was going to win 2-1 in that particular match. And he even prophesied how the scores were going to be scored, how one player from Highlanders, uh, Kudama Hachi, was going to be scoring, and how he would beat four or five defenders, big defenders, and score, and the match would finish in a 2-1 victory for Zimbabwe. And it came to pass. I don't know if the media is there to just put it up, uh, if we've got the, the, the clip for that. Then there is also a semi-final match that was also played between Zimbabwe and Burkina Faso, leading to the final for that um, Chan tournament. And it was accurately prophesied by the men of God that Zimbabwe would win in that particular match a single goal to zero. And it surely came to pass and Zimbabwe managed to win. Now I want people to understand that the prophecies that are given, given in church, they are given to the children of God. No prophecy, that is give, no prophecy that is given by the prophet of God or by our father is given to a media house. So there are other false, false documents or false stories that would come out in the media, different types of media, where if you have seen is a, a, a story that came said Zimbabwe win 3-0 against Libya for that Chan final, which is something that was never prophesied. It's something that was never offered. It's something that was just fabricated. And I'm urging that if you find any article that is being peddled or said in the press or in the newspapers, it's necessary for you to just verify with the footage because every prophet that is given at Eagle Life he has got footage. There is proper evidence to it. It's never edited. It's just there um, as, as, as it would have been given. Now, after the Chan tournament, there are players who actually came to confirm and to thank God for the work of God that had been done in their lives through the men of God. And I have here, I will just ask Deacon Kumbi to assist me. There are some jerseys that are of different players that actually performed exceptionally well that came back to thank the men of God for the prophecies and also speaking into their lives for their performances that they did during that tournament. So this is an original Zimbabwe jersey that was being worn by one Milton Nube when he was playing. And from there, these players, they got a lot of breakthroughs. From playing here in Islanders, he moved, I think he won bought by Ajax Cape Town. And he played, he's now retired, but he played during that time. There is another one here as well. Yes, this one belonged to Peter Rio Moyo. He came back with his jersey as well to just thank the men of God for the work. Uh, the prophecies, the sp speaking in into his life. There is one for Kudama Hachi. These are former Highlanders players that had gone for the tournament and they were coming back to give testimonies and they to give the, their jersey, their regalia. And it's one also for the goalkeeper. Munyara Zidia, he was the goalkeeper for Islanders by that time, but he was also with the Zimbabwe uh, national team by that time. So we just wanted to make, to make it very clear that you don't necessarily have to hear prophecies emanating from outside of ego life. They emanate from here. But if they are edited outside and they edit them in a full of maybe mistruths or something like that, you need to verify with the actual footages because the footages are always available for you to verify. Now, Captain Mapuranga, there is a narration or a narrative that is very common that says there is no room for God. There is no room for Jesus. There is no room for men of God, specifically for prophets in soccer. They don't have anything to do with soccer. What is your take concerning this particular narration or narrative? Also using your, your evidence and your analysis and your experience as a former 
a professional soccer player. Thank you. This is a total lie. Everyone need God. Because everyone is created by God. So as players, we love we need God. But I thank God for prophet. He has shown us a way. Uh, if you can see the way we were playing as a team at Highlanders and the way we love one another, it's because of him. Because if the spirit of God is there, the love of God is there also. We're the best disciplined team in the league. We're not fighting the referees. We're not fighting each other because of the love. So every team needs God. Because God is love. And you love another opponent. So as for me, it's a big testimony. Uh, I, I was not knowing God like what I'm knowing God these days. But because of the prayers of the prophet, he transformed me. I, little did I know that he was seeding a seed in me. But now I can see the results. Um, I can be proud for myself to, say, uh, to tell people to, the prophet has done a good job in my life. Now I've got a ministry that I lead in country. By, I'm the founder, Champions of Christ International Ministry. Because of the prophet. We used to do all night prayers as players alone and the prophet down there at um, Rose Camp there. We sing. We used to sing the songs of the world, but when we came to Jesus, we started to sing the songs of God. And uh, the fear we had before when we were using uh, the charms and the juju, when we meet the prophet, it just disappeared. We, we did not fear any team, and we know with our God we are going to win. And uh, I thank God because the prophet has done a big job in our lives. The people that we thought they, are, they were so crazy. If the prophet can transform the person like uh, Mtulis Maposa, ah, it was a big job. If you see the people like those ones taking a Bible to camp and sometimes he preaches, you just say, this is God, this is the anointing, this is the grace of the prophet. Powerful indeed. I, I'm not sure if it is very clear, but um, there is Coach Payindu there in the air, being hoisted. Media, maybe if you've got this as well, you can just show the entire church. This is after the team had won the Mbada Diamond League. This is Tuesday, 2 December 2013. And there is Captain Maburanga there in his t-shirt, Prophet Chiza predict big win for Boso. And there is the entire team, the Highlanders' entire team, just wearing the t-shirt as I was putting up cross, celebrating the work of God that had been done through the men of God. Now, as you have heard, everyone, uh, I conclude, the power of God is there even in football. Hallelujah. Jesus is there in football. Those ones who are still contemplating or are still thinking that it's these things you can achieve through the use of juju, it won't take you anywhere because those Jews can just deceive you, but it's just short-lived. God is there in football, and Jesus can change a football player's life as testified by these panelists that I have and also the others that we have mentioned, including the likes of the marvelous Nakamba. It leaves me to, to thank you, my guests, as we finish and wrap up this interview. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ch uh, Chimombe Kumbi, Coach Kaindu. It was a pleasure having you here. Captain Maipuranga, thank you so much. My ref, Mr. Chimandire, thank you so much. Till we meet again, thank you from the Exodus Studios, um, Exodus TV here in Eagle Life. Thank you, goodbye, and God bless you.